Hello, I am Vishal Rain. Welcome to Maya Hacks. In this video tutorial, we will see how to create a pixie dust effect with simple emitter and particles. So let's get started. For that, I would like to create a, a curve for the path. So I'll take a CV curve tool, a three cubic curve. So I just create a arc So I would like to just uh, rebuild this curve uniform so that the animation which happens along this curve will travel at a uniform space and also I just want to modify the curve to a smoother curve. I would like just uh, like to uh, rebuild this so I, I select the modeling menu. Go, I'll choose the curves and use the option called rebuild curve. So in that I would like to uh, not touch the spans and just rebuild it. So for uh, to see what exactly happening I'll go to display nerves edit points and you should see the spacing of this edit points will be readjusted to a uniform space. So I got this curve. I would like to create an emitter now. So I choose FX menu and particles and create an emitter here. So I would like to create a simple omni emitter and I'll just come to the perspective view. Let me play. You should see the particles here. These particles are right now falling down because these are end particles and n particles do respond to the gravity uh, from the nucleus node. So I select the nucleus node and you should see the gravity here. And if I select the particles in particles you will have dynamic properties. Here I can generally say ignore solver gravity and when I play it the particles will be emitted out like that. So. I'll just uh, select the emitter and name this emitter as Pixie Emitter. So I would like to add a minimum distance of 0.25 and a maximum distance of 1 or maybe 0 0.5 to 1. I would like to increase my time slider range to 250 frames. So I will select the emitter and then select the curve. I'll just go to the constraint motion paths. I have option called attach to motion path. So I would like to choose the start and end frame for this. The start frame is one and end frame. I would like to set it to 200 and then attach it here. So if I just play it, you should see the emitter is traveling along the curve. I would open the preferences window and choose the playback to 24 frames at 1x time. So that should be real time 24 fps. So I just select that and then play and you should see the particles are nicely emitting from uh, an emitter and the emitter is traveling along the curve. I would like to select the emitter and play with the maximum and minimum distance and you should see this particles going along that curve. I would like to increase the number of particles and also I would like to change the minimum maximum distance. I'm just playing with the values and I'm just seeing how things are turning out. So that I've got these particles uh, nicely emitting along the curve. Now I select the particles here and uh, go to the lifespan and here I choose the lifespan. From live forever I change it to random range and set the lifespan to 2 and lifespan random to 1. By setting that I'm randomizing the lifespan of the particles. Generally there is an option called constant. It will make the particles to live only for two seconds precisely. But when I say random range, it will uh, 
keep the particle anywhere between one second to three seconds so randomizing that gives a random or uneven fade off in the tail the particles nicely uh, fade off that way so so that I've created this one I'm going to select the emitter and I just want to play with the speed so I set the speed to 0 0.1 so that the trail would be very thin it doesn't give that um, thick or the particles don't run away from the source of emission if you could see if I increase the speed they just move away from the curve so I don't want that that's the reason I'm putting the speed random to sorry speed to 0 0.1 and to randomize that you can put a value of 0 0.05 in the speed random that makes some particles go slow and some particles speed so that i've got the particles with a particular speed now i select the particle shape and uh, in per particle array attributes i'll just get into this option called mass so what that actually does is makes the particles lighter or heavier the lighter particles generally get affected with the, the fields uh, uh, more than the heavier particles i'll just show you uh, by writing an expression and applying a field so what we do is firstly um, we will apply a field to this particular particles so I'll just get into the effects menu and uh, in fields I'll apply a field called uniform field uniform field uh, makes the particles to move in one single direction so I'm selecting the particle and I'm creating the uniform field so the particles will move in one single direction you could see so I want to give an effect of gravity so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the direction from X to minus Y so now particles will fall down uh, because uniform field is pulling the particles in negative Y direction I'm not using gravity because the mass doesn't work for the gravity so instead of gravity I'm using uniform field so I'll set the attenuation value to zero that makes the field work through infinitely equal in the viewport generally when I set this to one it works it, it is more strong where the field is located and weaker as it goes away from the uh, field so by making zero the particle which is there closer to the field the particle which is there away from the field works samely I mean affected same way so so that I've applied the attenuation zero the particles will fall down like that now I'll put a magnitude of 9.8 which is a universal gravitational force now let's see the particles falling down okay now let's check with the mass so you should see the particles are nicely falling with the same um, trail uh, let me just choose the ex uh, uh, mass expression so in mass I'm going to right click and say create expression there I'm going to copy this here I would like to write an expression random 0 0.1 to 1 so what I'm telling is by this expression I'm assigning different uh, mass values um, which could be ranging from 0 0.1 to 1 so by doing that the particles generally fall down more if you see some particles are not falling like uh, earlier when you if you see when I did the uh, when I didn't write the expression earlier to this expression that the trail was like like a thin line but here you should see that's more spread so I'll just change the expression and show you what I'm trying to tell here so I'll not write random 0 to 1 I just write 1 you see the, the, the way the particles were falling down here now let me show you now see the particles are very thin 
So earlier what happened is the lighter particles were uh, falling more quickly than the heavier particles. So I just changed the expression here to random range 0 0.5 to 0 0.7. So I get the particles with certain thickness here. Okay, you can generally put a different uh, range here. I mean a big range, so so that you get a bigger tail here. So 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. So you should see that. So the uniform field which I've created here has got a very high magnitude. I'm reducing it to one. I just want a very subtle influence over the particles. You see that weight on the pixie dust or you create a gold dust or a silver dust, whatever. So I'm going to select the particles and I'm going to apply a field called turbulence field. So in turbulence field, I'll set the attenuation value to zero and then play. I should see the particles are getting that sort of distortion. So the influence is way too much. I set the magnitude to 2 and I set the frequency to 2. I, I make a high frequency wave in this case to get that nice pixie dust effect. I change the background, switch off the grid, switch off the NURBS curve and I select the particles and uh, I'm going to change the point size to one. Now let's play that. Okay, I select the particles and if you should just see here, we got a color uh, and we have a I just, uh, just keep uh, speed and let's see what happens here. Uh, I just I, I take a, a red color and yellow color and choose the speed option. And you should see the particles which are uh, moving with high speed are in red color. The particles which are traveling at a low speed are yellow color. So you can generally give colors based on their speed in this case. So I take a So you can generally play with a lot of options here in turbulence. You can play with the frequency um, where the details could be much more finer or you can put a low frequency wave where the wave of the turbulence will be much bigger. You see the wave, there's a bigger wave there. So explore the options here in the turbulence to get more uh, different types of particle movements here. You can also try playing with dynamic properties and playing with certain options like conserve where the particles uh, doesn't move uh, as much as what earlier it was moving. You can generally see how different it came now. If I put the conserve value to 0 0.5, you see the effect is completely different from what the conserve 1 was doing earlier. You can also add a drag here where the particles are restricted to their movements. So they, they move less because of that external uh, atmospheric pressure type of thing on this. So you can play with the conserve and drag here and uh, you can apply different types of fields to get to make things uh, more interesting. You can add a field called Newton. Um, Newton generally attracts the particles towards it. So it can be uh, You should see that all particles are trying to uh, attract towards a center point. So uh, just a very subtle value I'm giving. 
okay it's not necessary i just want to show it that's the reason i have i've created the newton field here so i'm selecting the emitter and i'm just going to the rate of the particles and the first frame i'm making it zero and here i just move to somewhere uh, 20 frames and then increase the rate to 300 then i go to frame number 180 do a set key and then 200 i'll make a value of zero set key then you should see the particles initially don't get created much and uh, when it, it reaches to the frame number 200 it slowly fades off with the emission and it's a, a nice uh, closing of the effect here you can uh, uh, you can actually parent any particular object which can generate light bloom glow effects and uh, you can uh, enhance the overall look and feel of this additionally we can add more uh, sprite type of images in it and add additional layers into it which i can discuss in, uh, in a further video right now it's a very basic and uh, simple um, pixie dust effect i want to show you so just uh, play with this uh, emitter play with the fields and this mass expression and have fun creating pixie dust gold dust silver dust effects um, hope you liked it. Thank you very much.